Hello there, it's Mark here from Excel Off The Grid. In this video, we're looking at two uses for the F4 shortcut key. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I'm not a big user of shortcuts, but F4 is so useful, I think everyone should be using it. So if you're ready, let's get started. So there's two main uses for the F4 shortcut key. The first is our ability to toggle through all the options for dollar signs when trying to lock a cell reference. So here I want to have a calculation and I want that calculation to be the 31st of January for the North region and for the budget. Over here you can see that we have our data and they are the columns that we have. So we've got date, region, our actuality, so whether it's budget or actual, and the value. So in calculations, I'm going to come here to cell C4 equals sum ifs, open bracket. Now, what area do I want to sum? I want to sum my value. And I want to sum that where my date is equal to 31st of January, where my region is equal to the north, and where the actuality is equal to budget. I'll close that bracket. Now, as I'm sure you can appreciate, if I try and drag this down, it doesn't give us a lot of meaningful information. Because you can see here that all the relevant sections are selected, when I drag that down, each of those cells is dragged down as well. So let's come into this first cell. I'm going to click on B4 and I'm going to press F4 to cycle through the various options for locking that cell reference. So I want to lock column B, but not my row number. So that's $B$4. That's not what I want. That's B$4. So that's locked the row, but not the column. There we go. I've now locked my column B, but now my row can move. Calculations, I want C$2, which means that my column can change, but my row cannot. So C$2, and that's the same for our actuality as well. So C$3, press return of that, and then drag that down. So that now calculates those values correctly. And what happens if I drag this to the right? Well, each of these is referenced into the right place. You can see that those cell references are correct. Now, this brings up an interesting issue with Excel tables. Because what's happened is that here, we're looking at the data table and a column called value. When that gets dragged across, we're looking at the data table, but we're looking at the next column over, which was date. Unfortunately, we can't use dollars to lock in column references when we're using tables. Instead, what we need to do is add in a double set of square brackets. So in two square brackets, we're going to enter a colon and then get the value column again and close that with two square brackets. I'm going to do that to the other elements inside this formula. And these double square brackets are the equivalent of fixing a cell reference with the dollar sign. Just one more to go. Actuality, close square bracket, close square bracket. Now, copy that down and I drag those same values across. We get values for all of our areas because our cell reference has been locked with the F4 key to implement the dollar sign. But also, for our table references, we've used that method of naming those columns twice. Now, the next use for the F4 key is to repeat the previous action. So, for example, if I were to press Control B to make my north bold, I could press F4 to repeat that bold action on all my other cells. Now in this scenario, it's not particularly useful because we could just press Control B again. But let's have a look at another example. If I were to select budget, press Control 1 to bring up the formatting window, and I want to apply a single accounting underline. And then I'll click OK. Now here, there isn't another easy shortcut that I can use. So therefore, F4 is exceptionally useful as repeating an action that I've previously performed. So if like me, you're not a big fan of shortcuts in Excel, hopefully you'll realize that F4 might be one of the ones that you need in your arsenal because it does two useful things. First of all, it helps us toggle through all of the options for fixing cell references. And secondly, it helps us to repeat whatever the previous action is that we've just performed. That's it for this video. If you like what we teach and would like a free gift from us, then head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash free gift to find out more. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.